How's the audio, man? You sound great. This is going good. <laughs> Talk about dust intrusion. So, <laughs> I would take a Lacroix, ice cold Lacroix. Are they owned by Coca Cola? Who owns Lacroix? Coca Cola owns everything, man. They own your fucking pants. <laughs> So we're gonna to talk today about what you can do to make your camper set up more water and dust resistant. We mount our campers onto the open truck bed and truck beds are generally designed to drain. So there's lots of holes and gaps built into the truck we're putting our camper on. So we're gonna kind of walk through what you can do to your truck bed before an install to try to get ahead of that if that is a uh, priority for you. Each model of truck is gonna be different but the principles are all basically the same. So yeah, we'll jump in there. Some that surprised me and mine is water has found a way under underneath the bed cap and the bed rail. In here you can see some evidence of water that's actually come in from behind this plastic part and drain down here. So one thing we're gonna do is pop this off and look at what we might be able to do ahead of an install to prevent that. Tacomas also have these big gaps up here and a lot of other trucks are similar, but the way the Tacoma truck bed is constructed is there's this kind of front bar. It's not continuous with the sidewall side of the truck bed. So you've got a like quarter inch air gap here right at the front. So you definitely want to close that up because that's going to have a leave a through hole in a um, relatively ex exposed location. And then the Tacoma also has these drain holes in the truck bed, which Josh has covered up. And I don't recommend that because if water does get in, it's nice if it has an exit point. So I'm going to undo your, all of your fine work here, Josh. You can always recap those and I won't yell. Beyond that, there those are kind of the main ones. I don't. I haven't seen in mine water getting in anywhere besides those two locations. <laughs> They're just little, little spring clips in there. I'm not sure how well this is going to go back on, but that's Josh's problem. All right. So that popped off. My take on it is like a piece of butyl tape here and you set that down and you don't try to plug these holes. Were you thinking about like closing these holes? Cause they're gonna drain to the exterior. I don't think that's where it's getting in. So they'd be draining down between the body and the bed liner. So I don't think that's really what the problem is. There's gotta be a better tool for this. You gonna look that up on YouTube and see, see if there's any reviews for tools to pop these panels off with. Yeah, look right there. That's where the water's getting in. That water's just getting forced up and across that rail and then coming down to the interior of the truck bed. So I think running a piece of butyl tape like this and down right here, and then resetting that bed rail cap on it is gonna lock it up. So I'm just gonna wipe it down, get all the dust off of it, try and get a nice clean surface for the butyl tape to grab, because you don't want it to adhere to the dust. You want it to adhere to the truck. So what'd you find on your Gen 2, Sasha? Tell me all about your Gen 2, bud. Um, yeah, wipe it down, run that tape over all of these openings, and then, you know, you want it to get it as low as possible, make good connection with it, and then you just pop the cap right back on, it'll pierce it, and then that's it. Did you put butyl tape down, or just fill the no, openings? No, I just put this, uh, this duct tape stuff right over See? all of these guys. He's got a fear in here. So the water, I think the water's getting across here and down on the inside. Because that was, on that side there was all the tracks running down yeah, the interior. So that's, it's a little bit different on my Gen 2. Oh, well, this guy's a Gen 2. He's yeah. got a whole Gen 2 thing going on. Exactly. Um, I did also run a bead of lap sealant on top of this for the All plastic the to down. set in. Yeah, just like. That makes sense, some sort of a gasket between the plastic bed rail cap yeah. and the metal yeah. this makes was, sense. This was primarily for dust. Oh, yeah. I see. I can see an argument for dust there. Yeah. I mean, why not do both? Yeah. What's the consequence? So then the idea there is dust is getting, coming up from between the truck bed and the truck body, yeah. working its way through these holes and into the truck bed. I can see that, okay. I don't think water would do that, but dust would. Okay, thank you. Never do You're that. welcome, dude. You're welcome. I feel I don't super on the spot right now. Well, <laughs> you are. <laughs> Great. So then the goal there is to close these with something that all those clips can pass through again and kind of create a seal around the clip to keep the dust from coming up from between the truck bed and the truck body and then working its way between that plastic cap. So then material wise, this is just HVAC tape 
Um, you can get it at any hardware store. This one's made by Tape Plus, which is, I think, probably the generic version of a 3M product. <laughs> tape Plus. So this is, it's like a foil tape, and it has a, just a backer on it. There you go. So that is mostly a barrier against dust. What fun. So Sasha said he put a little layer of lap sealant down, which was this guy. We're gonna put a bead of the Cicaflex um, down on the plastic part on the outside. And then on the interior of the truck bed, we're gonna put a bead here, cause that'll, if that squeezes out, it'll squeeze out behind the flange in a discreet place. And I'm just gonna throw some blue masking tape up real quick. Um, so that if there is any squeeze out to the outside of the truck, we have a easy way to just kind of tidy it up. This is probably overkill. You'd probably be fine just cleaning it up off the truck body with um, some alcohol or something like that. But once you think about it, you might as well do it. All right. This print is so small. I don't know what its open time is, but I guess we'll just see. All right, so uh, let's see, this is, it comes in white and black, and this is white, which is gonna be nice if it does pop out on a black truck. That's what you want. So I'm gonna just run a little kind of generous bead of Cicaflex, because I want it to be tucked away. I wanna be sure there's enough that it squishes in and fills all the little cavities and voids around the ribs. And this is kind of like a secondary layer of defense, so I'm going a little bit lighter. Lining it up and puncturing all that tape. Getting it back in. Yeah, so you want to get the black Sika Flex. That all should clean up with alcohol fairly well. You might want to do that. I'm going to get the other one on while it's open over there. So with Tacomas, when, when we're installing third gen Tacomas here, we'll take, um, this is just some closed cell foam, and we'll just put a little piece of foam in that gap at the front corner of the truck bed and then kind of seal over it with butyl tape. This is the butyl tape that we use. And just kind of makes up, just get some material in that gap. And I'm just trying to get it seated all the way down to the bottom. So now I'm just taking this butyl tape and laying it on top of that foam. So there's some other spots in the Tacoma and I'm, and you know, I'm not as familiar with other vehicles, truck beds, but these guys just depends on how worried about dust intrusion you are. That's not going to be an issue with water getting in your truck bed. Um, but on a dusty road, it could be circulating up in there and finding its way in there. Similarly, these little cubbies all have holes that go to the environment. You sort of just have to figure out what your threshold for pain is and live with it. So at this point, what we've done is we've we've popped the bed rail caps off, put down some HVAC foil tape and a bead of Cicaflex on the exterior and the interior. Then we put a little foam block here and covered it with butyl tape. So we've got these kind of big gaping holes at the front of the truck bed ready to receive the camper. And then that point of ingress between the bed rail cap and the truck bed body. So once the camper goes on, should be pretty good to go. So. We're gonna pop the bulb seal off that we uh, used down here and put a fresh, a fresh gasket on. You can see the bulb seal we use, it's a double bulb seal and, and you can see how it's just conformed to the uh, shape of the bed rail cap. So this is like, I mean, that's a tight seal between the camper and the truck bed. That just reinforces to me the fact that the, the water that we're seeing on the interior of the sidewalls of the truck bed are getting in between the truck bed and the plastic cap that we just sealed up. This is the bulb seal as it looks at a, when your camper, you know, before it gets compressed on the camper, and this is after it's been compressed for a few months. So you can see all that material is just conforming down into the shape of the bed rail and creating a, 
creating a nice seal between the camper and the truck bed. Now the camper is back on the truck with fresh bulb seal between the camper and the truck bed. From the camper up, all of the openings have um, weather stripping, these, these nice rubber uh, bulb seals. So your doors, those give you a nice continuous seal around the whole door. We've got the gunnels kind of providing a uh, redirect for water um, when the doors are open. And then at the tailgate itself, between the camper and the tailgate, there's another bulb seal here attached to this flange. So we sealed up underneath the plastic bed rail caps and got that tightened up. And we also sealed the little gaps that are built into the Gen 3 Tacoma truck beds. All that you have to do before the camper goes on. Uh, but from there, all the rest of the gaps and drainage points in the truck bed can be addressed. And love to see in the comments what folks have done to tighten up their setups.